Hey, welcome to Outdoors and Country Living. Let's make some homemade chili. Make sure you check out the recipe that's in the description box below. We're gonna need two quarts of home canned tomatoes in their own juice, two cans of chili beans in sauce, kidney beans and black beans, some salt and pepper, some chili powder. This is our favorite chili powder. Two pounds of ground venison. You can use two pounds of any kind of ground meat of your choice. One onion and the equivalent of one bell pepper that we grew and vacuum sealed and froze. Gonna need a large pot to put all of this in. Let's get started making this delicious homemade chili. Gonna need about three or four tablespoons of oil because I'm using a lean meat venison. I'm adding oil. I'm just roughly chopping the onion here. You can chop it however you like. We like our chili pretty chunky. In goes the bell pepper. It's already chopped up for me. We're going to start sauteing this and cooking down the vegetables. I'm adding the one teaspoon salt and one teaspoon of black pepper. We're just going to get this nice and hot and start blending all these flavors. Let's get our tomatoes opened. So I just use a butter knife to open my lids. I like to do as little damage to the lids as possible because I do reuse them. That's another topic for another day. So these are canned tomatoes we did in 2020. We're still using up our 2020 stock. Don't those look good? All right, so the vegetables are continuing to saute and cook down. I'm going to be adding a tablespoon of garlic powder. Mix that in. Wish you could smell this. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in the meat. And this meat is mostly frozen. I often make chili with frozen meat. We're just gonna put the lid on and let that steam and cook down a little bit. Meanwhile, let's drain our kidney beans and our black beans. We're gonna drain and rinse both of these just because you don't want the pastiness of these beans going into your chili soup. I'm just using some cold water, getting any extra beans that are left in the cans out. We're just going to rinse these really well until everything runs clear out of the beans. Meaning no more cloudiness from the bean paste liquid that was in the cans. Just rinse with cold water. I'm going to lift the basket up here and you can see that it's running clear. We're just going to let those sit there and drain really well and wait their turn. So here I'm just taking the lid off. I'm continuing to cook this meat down. It's breaking apart pretty easily. You could use any ground meat of choice, venison, hamburger, turkey, chicken, other wild game, etc. I'm just cooking the meat until it's no longer pink. I like to cook the meat and make it well done. Just using my lid again to continue to thaw that out. 
All right, now that we have no more frozen chunks in there, it's still pink, so I'm still cooking it. I want to make sure that meat is all brown before I add any other ingredients. While we're waiting on that to finish cooking, I just have my beans here sitting on a plate ready to go in. I have three tablespoons of chili powder in that bowl. My two cans of chili beans in the sauce, don't drain the sauce off, and the two quarts of home canned tomatoes waiting to go into the pot as soon as the meat is done cooking. So let's check that meat again. Ah, looking good. So the meat is fully cooked to my liking. It is no longer pink. And that is not fat with the meat in there. So I'm not gonna drain that. That's just liquid from the vegetables and the frozen meat. Now I'm adding the beans, both cans of chili beans with the chili sauce that's in them. If you're using a meat that does have a lot of extra fat or grease to it, you'll want to drain that off so your chili is not greasy. In goes black beans and the dark red kidney beans. Let's stir that around. We like a lot of beans in our chili. If you don't care for this many beans, you could leave some out or change them up if you want different kinds. I've used cannellini beans before. I'm adding the tomatoes with the juice. I can these in their own juice so it's nice and concentrated tomato taste. You can also use pinto beans. Really make it your own. Use what you like or use what you have. And just stir that around really well. Blend it up. Now it's starting to look like chili. In goes the three tablespoons of chili powder. Stir that really well. Incorporate that so those flavors get throughout the entire pot of chili. And now all we have to do is get it nice and hot. So once I get it all stirred really well, I'm just going to put the lid back on it and get it nice and hot. We are getting there. Nice low boil here. I have it on about a medium heat. Medium to low. Depends how long you need to keep it hot. If you're going to eat it right away, bump up the heat a little bit. If you're going to wait, let it simmer. So I don't know about you, but at our house, we serve chili in various ways. We'll have it with celery and peanut butter, a little half of a peanut butter sandwich, or cornbread, cheese and crackers. It varies each time we have chili, it seems. Sometimes we add in some shredded cheese, some sour cream, some hot sauce, some cowboy candy. There's a million ways you could eat your chili and there's several things that you could eat with your chili. Thanks for sticking around and seeing how we make delicious homemade chili.
until next time, take care of yourself and may God bless you. We'll catch you later. See you later. <laughs>